All right, so uh, strap in. We're going to talk about pelvic fractures, and uh, it's a big topic. Um, I hope uh, you also, uh, you know, read up on this, and um, you know, it's a source of a lot of test questions. It's an important topic for for many reasons, and um, let's get into it. So, all right, so. Um, Start off with this uh, pre-lecture question. I'll give you a couple of these, and uh, when we're done with everything, hopefully uh, you'll be able to comfortably manage these. So if you have to, pause your video and uh, think about this question. Here's uh, here's the X-ray. Okay. All right. So here's the question. Those are your answer choices. So if you need to pause, think about what you think the answer is. We'll get to it at the end of uh, all these lectures. Second question. No pictures for this one. And here's the third question. And there's going to be an x-ray for this. All right, so pre-lecture question number three. All right, so well, like I said, we'll get to these all at the very end of the uh, pelvic fracture talks. So let's go through some key points for pelvic ring trauma. We're not going to talk too much about intraarticular acetabulum fractures, but we'll stick to the pelvic ring. So firstly, and foremost, pelvic fractures and associated dislocations like symphyseal injuries, these can bleed, all right? And this is the key thing here. You can get hemorrhage and um, you will be, you know, sort of an integral part of the management of these patients, which you, you're not used to doing. You know, the, you're as an orthopedic surgeon, this is not something, you know, this is something trauma surgery does, but when it comes to these injuries, Trauma surgery often relies on us to help them manage these patients and determine the appropriate treatment. So you got to be able to distinguish stable from unstable injuries. And I think there's two ways to think about it. One is hemodynamic stability. The other is mechanical stability. All right. So your goal is to treat the hemorrhage, resuscitate the patient. You know, you pack open injuries, wrap the patients to provide stability, warm them up to correct, uh, correct or prevent coagulopathy. Uh, get them uh, IV fluids, blood products, get them to angio if needed, and um, divert open injuries to prevent contamination and possible sepsis. And like I said, you will play a role with this. You know, you need to get involved early, and uh, you may need to consider getting urology involved early, especially if there's any urologic injury, which often goes along with these. So What's the problem? Well, like I said, it's primarily hemorrhage, right? But it's also pain, instability, late functional problems when you have a patient with an injury like this, right? So the first question you have to be able to answer is how do you stop the bleeding and properly mobilize, right? Move this patient. You know, do you operate on them? Do you treat them non-op? Do you just do all those maneuvers to, to stop the bleeding? Um, and this is something you're going to have to try and answer. So we'll go through some basic stuff. Bony anatomy, ligamentous stability, neurovascular structures that you need to know they're at, at risk, and uh, the pelvic viscera. So here's a view just for you to review the pertinent pelvic, bony, and ligamentous anatomy from the front and from the back. And the, the thing that strikes you, I think, that you should really pay attention to is the, the ligamentous complex in the back. All right, so tremendous uh, posterior SI ligaments uh, are apparently one of the, you know, some of the strongest ligaments in the body. And when they are disrupted, that's the key to posterior ring instability. And that's what creates the tile type C injury. Obviously, you need to be aware, you know, if you're talking about hemorrhage so much, you gotta be aware where the vessels are, you know, the internal versus the external iliac tree. You know, which are the major vessels? Obviously, the external iliac comes out and becomes the femoral uh, vessels. Uh, these retropubic anastomoses between the, you know, obturator and uh, external iliac tree uh, help to form, or sometimes they come right off the inferior epigastric, but, you know, these forms, your, uh, um, you know, it can form a large vessel called the corona mortis. Uh, the internal iliac tree exiting the uh, greater uh, sciatic, sciatic notch, especially the uh, superior and inferior gluteal arteries. This is a this is a major source of hemorrhage right here that you need to be aware of. 
and the pelvic floor. Of course, you know, this can be disrupted uh, when you have especially like APC or vertical shear type injuries. Now, I showed you some more detailed anatomy of the ligaments here, sort of more of a cartoonish look. Uh, and you can see the anterior SI ligaments, which are relatively weak, and then the strong posterior SI ligaments, and then the pelvic floor and the symphysis. So that kind of makes up mostly what you need to know about the ligaments. Now, there's also the so-called iliolumbar ligament, which is right here. That's not an important ligament, except if you see an avulsion of the transverse process here, oftentimes that's called a sentinel sign or indication that the pelvis experienced some type of dynamic instability, vertical migration perhaps at the time of impact. So what about radiographs? Well, you need to know the basic AP inlet, outlet views. Uh, other imaging include CT scans and Jude views. Now, the Jude views are really for acetabular uh, intraarticular fractures, right? You don't just get five views for every single pelvis you see. It's a lot of radiation. You've got to think about what you're getting and why you're getting it. And hopefully our uh, you know, protocols help to outline that for you. So here's an inlet view. As I consider this a pretty nice inlet view. Uh, model and uh, showing the sort of caudal uh, direction of the imaging. Now this is going to show you anterior to posterior displacement. Okay, so if you have like a ramus fracture that's poking, you know, into the, uh, I don't know, vagina anteriorly or uh, it's displaced, you know, posteriorly or whatever, you're going to see that here. You're going to see posterior displacement um, in the back of the pelvic ring as well. Whereas on the outlet view, you're really going to see sort of um, vertical displacement. So if like one hemipelvis is higher than the other, you're gonna see that here. Now for, for um, intraoperative imaging, like when you're doing SI screws, this would probably be the better view than this. Here you can see the superior ramus is way up here as opposed to here, you know, it's down here. I mean, the S1 foramen is up here, right? But on this X-ray, the, the ramus is down here and the S1 foramen is up here. So just a just a thing, intraoperatively when you're doing SI screws, this is the view you want to, to avoid going into the sacral foramen. So you kind of see them end on. Um, you know, again, the outlet view kind of helps you show like a frontal view of the sacrum. It'll show if there is vertical displacement and it gives you a nice view of those sacral foramen. What are CT scans good for? Well, you know, we get them a lot. Why do we get them? Well, I mean, they help to show the posterior ring better, right? That sacrum often is obscured by bowel gas, hard to see. Um, and um, you can also help to identify, is it is it a pure, you know, is it a, is it a complete front-to-back fracture through the sacrum, or is it just an impaction injury, like an anterior impaction, like you see with an LC1? Um, is there you know, a true dislocation through the SI joint. Sometimes it's hard to see on AP x-rays. You can see it on a CT scan. Now, let's go through the uh, sort of basics of the young Burgess classification. Well, you have lateral compression, um, AP compression, and vertical shear. And sometimes you can have a combined mechanism, which is, com you know, sort of none of the above, but a combined thing. So, you know, the lateral compression essentially shortens the ligaments, right? Usually you have like a, you know, compression and it could be a stable sacral impaction or you can have compression on here and widening on the other side, the so-called windswept pelvis. And then you can have something in between, which is called the LC2. You get an iliac wing fracture, which goes through the back of the pelvis. We'll have to show it on some other slides. Versus the AP compression, right? So this is sort of like the forces directed anteriorly so so you know supposedly like the the, the guy on the motorcycle you know kind of going over the handlebars uh, hitting a pole perhaps or something and the legs splaying open you get rupture of the pelvic floor tremendous blood loss uh, and certainly in the APC3 you can have the posterior SI ligaments out as well and the vertical shear injury you got to be careful vertical shear injury you will have some symphyseal displacement so just because there's a little symphyseal widening doesn't make it an APC2 or 3 right because with the, with the vertical shear, the symphysis will be disrupted a little bit, a couple of centimeters maybe, but most importantly, it's only a couple of centimeters open, but the back is out, right? As opposed to the APC3, which is way, way, way wide open before the back goes out. So there's a distinction there, and you have to pay attention to that. 
also pay attention to the fact that, you know, especially from this, this older uh, shock trauma data, uh, young Burgess classification, they showed that the APC3s have tremendous blood loss uh, compared to the other fracture types. And the lateral compression ones had more head injuries. Um, so in the open book pelvic fracture, the pelvic volume is increased. And the goal of one of the things you want to do is to decrease it. And in the, in the lateral compression fracture, the pelvic volume is compressed. And you can see there's sort of like this internal rotation of this side of the pelvis compared to that. That's not a perfect AP view, but um, that is what's going on here. So um, I think we'll stop here uh, for, uh, for now. And uh, we'll pick the rest up in the next, uh, in the next set of uh, slides. Thanks.